The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. Mm. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on, I shall not drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink of it with you in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have faith, your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have faith in you shaken, Mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep, and he said to Peter, So you could not watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking of it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. 
While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you've come here for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in your sheath. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my father and he will not provide me at this moment with more than 12 legions of angels? But then how would the scripture be fulfilled which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come here as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I saw teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has to come to pass, to pass that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? And they said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, the betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. 
flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor who questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at the time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they assembled, Pilate said to them, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to him in reply, which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? And they all said, let him be crucified. But he said, why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourself. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Wearing a crown of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, 
he saved others, he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel? Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at about three o'clock, Jesus cried in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, this one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it on his new tomb that he'd hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, he has been risen from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, the guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you for being with us today, my friends. And perhaps you'd be happy to hear that I'm not going to give a homily. Uh, I didn't feel that I could, I'm not good enough to improve on the passion. So instead, I just have a few miscellaneous, miscellaneous comments. The first one is that uh, today we heard uh, the account of the passion 
from the Gospel of St. Luke. But remember, there are four Gospels, uh, and in each of them, uh, we have an account of the Passion. Uh, they're very similar, but also there are enough differences that, uh, that can be interesting. So during this time, I would just encourage you to uh, you have plenty of time in your hands to take out your Bible and uh, over the next four days and read, read all of them. Uh, not at the same time, but perhaps one day after another. My second comment is that the word passion uh, doesn't refer to the high emotion of the occasion. Rather, it has to do with being passive. Uh, and uh, that's exactly what Jesus was during the whole affair. Uh, he, he wasn't, up until that time, he was an actor uh, in so many different ways, acting on, on the events of the day. But from this time onwards, the beginning of the, of the Passion, he became, he became a passive individual. Uh, we know that he was mocked, uh, he was insulted, uh, he was spat upon, but that he did not retaliate uh, on any occasion. Just a word on the crowd, uh, the crowd who on uh, this, this day uh, threw palms and their cloaks on the ground for Jesus. Uh, later on in the gospel today, we hear how they cho chose Barabbas instead of Jesus and how ultimately they called crucify him, crucify him. And I think that's not just a, a word about the people at that time, it's a word about the people of all times to the extent that the fickleness of, of all of us, in a sense, how we can change from, from day to day. Then just a reminder that uh, Peter and Judas, in some ways, they were similar. Uh, uh, Peter denied Jesus. Uh, Judas betrayed him. Uh, Peter sought forgiveness and got it, unfortunately. Unfortunately, uh, Judas wasn't able to do that. Instead, he despaired, and ultimately, we know that he committed suicide. And uh, just finally, uh, just keep in mind that as Jesus was dying, uh, he was, his patient suffering that he, he, he experienced, he was offering up that patient suffering to his heavenly Father on behalf of sinful humanity. And my final point has to do with uh, the fact that, that uh, the passion story, at the end of the day, it's, it's an invitation. It's an invitation to all of us. You know that in, uh, earlier in the scripture it says, take up your cross, come and follow me. We're all called upon to follow Jesus, uh, to take up our cross and to become his disciples. So during this time with the coronavirus, uh, so many of us are, uh, of you, are not working. Uh, you have a lot of time on your hands. So uh, I just uh, encourage you to, to use it to reflect upon your faith. You know, when you think of any of us, there's a sort of a, there's, we're two people. There's the outside self and the inside self. And, you know, in, in the business world, uh, in the day-to-day -day world, we tend to focus so much upon the outside world the inside world, which is, in a sense, our secret world, uh, it's the world th that only we know fully. Uh, I would encourage you to really take a look at that inside world and uh, to try and sort of meet Jesus in there, to take the time to think about what discipleship is all about and uh, to become disciples, hopefully, in the very best sense of the word. So uh, it's a holy week, and it's a holy week uh, not just because of what Jesus did, but hopefully also what we hope to accomplish for our own souls during this time. So I invite you now to please stand for a profession of faith.